Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear us? Okay, good. So uh, today, uh, my name is Yijia Wang. Today with Piero Molino, we are going to introduce you Kota, Customer Abstraction Ticket Assistant. Uh, Kota is a machine learning model, uh, a machine learning system we built to improve customer support at Uber. So before I explain more what is it, uh, let me firstly introduce who we are. My name is Yijia Wang. I'm a data scientist in the applied machine learning team. Uh, I received my PhD from Carnegie Mellon University before I joined Uber. And uh, my background is natural language processing and human-computer interaction. Piero is a senior research scientist uh, at Uber AI Labs. He's an expert in natural language processing, uh, deep learning, and dialogue system. Okay, so here's, here is what we'd like you to take away after this talk. Today, we are going to introduce two versions of Kota. Kota V1 uh, is built with classical natural language processing and machine learning models. Uh, we have proved that uh, it can improve the efficiency of customer support at Uber uh, through A-B test. Currently, it's already in the production, uh, saving uh, Uber millions of dollars per year. After the success of Kota V1, we didn't just stop there. Uh, we further uh, expand our model uh, to Kota V2 uh, version 2 with deep learning techniques. And our experiments, offline experiments, already show that uh, Kota V2 can further boost our model performance by 20% more. Uh, we have recently uh, published an article about Kota in Uber Edge blog, so please feel free to read through it after this talk if you want to learn more detail about it. So here is today's agenda. I'll firstly talk about the challenge of, of customer support at Uber and which motivates us to propose and build Kota. After that, Piero will introduce how we expand Kota V1 to version 2 with deep learning techniques. And then at the end, he will wrap up the talk with a comparison between Kota V1 and V2. Okay, so let me firstly explain uh, what motivates us to build Kota. So what's the challenge? Uh, as Uber grows and also expand our business, the number of tickets we receive from our customers also increases. Specifically, we receive millions of tickets from our users uh, per week. It can include rider, driver, eater, and so on. Okay. And more importantly, uh, there are thousands of different types of issues our users may encounter, which make the task of solving the ticket is not as easy, as, we, as trivial as we expected. So let me explain this in more detail by firstly go through a typical workflow of ticket resolution process at Uber. So when our users have a problem, uh, they firstly need to, the most common way they will do is to open in app support, and then where they are going to going through a hierarchy of issue type, and then select the node that match their problem the most. For example, is it about cancellation or, or like about like my food is cold when I got it. After that, they will write certain set, several sentences to describe their problem in details. Once the ticket is submitted and received by our customer supported, support uh, representative, sometimes we call them agents, uh, there are three major steps our agent will need to take in order to solve one ticket. Firstly, they will need to decide what's the correct type of issue uh, of this ticket. Is this about uh, uh, cancellation, account payment adjustment, or uh, like my driver didn't show up? Okay, once that's done, our uh, agent will serve like a detective. They will need to investigate into this ticket to including uh, the user information, the trip history, and also the policy associated with each trip uh, where the trip happens. Okay, they will decide an action and take one. So after that, uh, our agent will write a message to inform our user uh, this ticket is solved and through what kind of approach. Usually, our agent doesn't need to uh, write a reply from scratch. Uh, we have a bank of reply template from which our uh, users can, uh, our agents can choose one and modify that one. Okay. So here is uh, what our agent usually see when they open a ticket. When they open a ticket, the first thing, as I say, they will need to decide what's the content type, what's the issue type of this ticket. And at Uber, it's really not an easy task because we have thousands of ticket type. They need to pick one out of thousands. Okay. After that, they investigate into the ticket and then decide to take the right, what kind of uh, proper action to take. Uh, at the end, they will need to write a response to our user and 
pick by picking one uh, reply template out of our bank. And this is, again, not a really easy task. There are thousands of templates. They need to just pick one. Okay. So because of this, uh, this motivates us to build quota, propose and build quota. So quota v1 consists of a set of machine learning models that recommend in the top most relevant solution to our agent. Uh, specifically, it has three models. Type models that uh, present the top suggestions content type to our agent. So they can pick one rather than like pick one out of the thousand. Okay. After that, the action model will reorder the actions based on their relevancy to the tickets. And then reply model will surface the top three most relevant reply template uh, to our users, uh, to our agents. So because the type model and the uh, reply models are more difficult, um, there are thousands of classes uh, in this case. So we, in the rest of this talk, we are going to focus on these two models. Here's how we build this. Uh, so now our problem becomes given a ticket, uh, we want to build a model to predict its content type or its reply template. Okay? And the most intuitive way and also the first approach that we try is to build a multi-class classification model. Uh, to do so, given a ticket, we'll firstly convert them into four types of features. Uh, it's showing here. Um, user information, example of user information can be user type, uh, such as driver, rider, or eater. For example, driver is not going to submit the ticket saying my driver never show up, right, because he's the driver. So which can be a useful information uh, in our model. After that is the trip information that include estimate type of arrival or CTID. Different trip uh, happen in different cities associated with this different policy, which can be also informative uh, for our model. And ticket metadata can be ticket created time or uh, product type. Okay. So a ticket submitted through Uber pool uh, should not be have a content type like uh, my, co uh, my food is cold when I got it. So it's more an Uber Eats ticket. Okay. And more importantly, uh, we extract natural language processing features from the ticket message written by our uh, user. Uh, to do so, there are several pre-processing steps we will need to firstly go through, uh, in, such as tokenization or stable removal. After that, uh, we will extract low-level uh, NLP features such as time frequency, inverse document frequency, as well as the high-level NLP features such as latent semantic analysis. Once that's done, all these features fit into the multi-class classification algorithm such as random forest, and the model is built to predict content type or reply template. This is the first approach we try. However, uh, the model performance is not as good as we expected because we found that there are thousands of classes we need to like predict, uh, so that make the case uh, is difficult. So we take a tweak uh, to this problem and then convert it into a binary classification and ranking problem. Okay. So I'm going to describe the detail about how we do this in the next slide, uh, but basically this approach allows us to include information <coughs> Uh, about the candidate content type or candidate reply template in the model's features, which kind of make the feature space more inform uh, informative. <laughs> so here is how we uh, convert this multi-class classification model to a ranking approach. So this is a typical setting of a multi-class classification model. Given the ticket, uh, we firstly convert them into uh, features, and the model is to build to predict the labels. It's content type one or content type two. Okay. So in this case, there are only two classes, content type one and two. That's a very easy case. But in our case, in reality, we have thousands of this content type, which make it difficult. And this is what we do to convert it into a binary uh, classification and ranking problem. So firstly, uh, we pair each ticket with all the possible uh, content type. So ticket, ticket one is paired with content type one and also content type two. And the label will be one if there is a match between uh, the ticket and content type, otherwise zero. So do, by doing so, uh, we convert it into a binary classification problem. At the same time, uh, this approach also allows us to include uh, the uh, candidate, uh, candidate type as features and also the similarity between the ticket and candidate type uh, as features. So our feature space is enriched uh, and model performance is better. Okay. So here is a comparison between a multi-class classification model and a ranking model. So we found that uh, the, uh, the metrics is hit at three. That means whether any of the top three suggestion is used by our agent or not. Okay. And we found the ranking approach can outperform uh, the uh, multi-class classification approach by 10% more. 
After that, we take this ranking model to A-B test. Uh, we split the agent into control and treatment group. For the agent in the control group, they will just see the default setting uh, of uh, the, uh, our customer support uh, platform. For example, this is, they need to usually need to go through this tree structure to select the correct content type. Uh, in, for the agent in the treatment group, they will see the top three uh, suggestion by our quota. So, uh, and this experiment shows that uh, the, our quota can save 8.8% average handle time per ticket uh, for the agent in the treatment group. Okay. And while at the same time, it's not decreasing our customer satisfaction. Uh, because uh, our A-B test result is positive, so after that, we rolled, it, rolled the English model out. So currently, it's already in production, serving our agents and saving, our, uh, uh, saving millions of dollars at Uber uh, per year. Okay. So uh, we didn't just stop there. Uh, we further, currently, we are further expanding our English model uh, to Spanish and Portuguese. So in total, these three language models will be able to cover us more than 90% of tickets globally. So now uh, Pierre will talk about how we expand our first version to second version with deep learning techniques. Thank you, Isha. So now, yeah, let's talk about these deep learning models that help us improve the performance of um, Quota. So deep learning models are actually um, pretty um, accurate and um, perform really well when you have uh, raw data, in particular um, images or raw text, because they learn those representations of this, this, this type of features. And in our case, instead, we have several different types of features, including also categorical, binary, and uh, numerical features. So because of that, we built this architecture that makes it possible to combine all these different um, features, encoding them in one single space, combining them together, and then using some decoding techniques to predict what um, each specific, specific output feature does. And in our case, for instance, categorical features will be uh, the contact type and the reply template. Um, this architecture is pretty generic and we're gonna, and it can be reused in many other uh, machine learning um, settings, so we're gonna open source it soon. In particular for text, because it's what we care mostly about, the text of the message that the user sent us, um, we have six different um, models uh, for encoding. And um, the first one is a character-based CNN. So it's a convolutional neural network that pays attention on uh, short sequences of characters. And um, the model is com composed of six layers of convolution and two layers of fully connected. The other option that we have is uh, using words as base features and have patterns of convolution on top of words, sequences of words, sequences of length two, three, four, and five, and then combine them all together to uh, pass them through fully connected layers. Then we have two models, one for characters and one for words, that instead of using convolutional neural networks, use recurrent neural networks like LSTMs and GRUs, and those models actually pay attention to the full sequence of um, text that's our input. And finally, we have a combination of the two, both for characters and words, where you have three layers of convolution followed by two layers of recurrent neural networks, and finally two layers of fully connected to, uh, to get an encoding for our text. So because we have all these options, we compare them all uh, through an upper parameter um, search where we randomly sampled 100 samples of hyperparameters for each of these architectures. And we found out that the character-based CNRNN is the most um, accurate one, but it's about 10 times slower than the second most accurate one, which is the word CNN. And because of that, we decided to go with the word CNN uh, for production. Another thing that we added to our models is um, we injected the notion of um, um, sequence and hierarchy that we have uh, among the different contact types. So in particular, the contact types are structured in a tree, and instead of predicting the, each node in the tree independently like we were doing before, uh, we try to predict the path from the root of the tree to the contact type that we want to predict. And so for instance, what we do here is that uh, we have a recurrent neural network that um, gets as input the um, uh, father node and uh, spits out uh, the child node and then feeds it back again in the, yeah, here. Again, in the, in the following step, uh, feeds back 
the prediction to predict at each single layer of the tree. Doing so actually uh, helps in two ways. It improves slightly the accuracy, but also makes the errors of the model um, more reasonable because um, if you consider also the parent node as a, co a correct classification, uh, then our model predicts the parent node more often, which means that our CSR agents are just one click away for the correct prediction, even if when the model is wrong, uh, rather than having to do multiple clicks to get to the wrong part of the tree. So the final architecture is composed of uh, textual encoding through convolutional layers. Um, we encode the categories through embeddings. We encode the, uh, the numerical features with simple batch norm layer. And we also we, we get also binary features that are all concatenated together into a single representation. And the single representation is passed through some fully connected layers with dropout. And they are used for doing the recurrent <clears throat> to predict the type through the recurrent model that I just showed you before, and also to predict the reply. And a nice addition here is that we actually feed the contact type as an input for the reply, because obviously, if you know what kind of issue you are dealing with, uh, it's more likely that you're going to give a correct prediction about what reply to use for that specific issue. And at training time, we actually feed in the ground truth contact types, but at prediction time, at, at test time, we actually have to feed the prediction, uh, the predicted type as input to the reply model. Doing so actually helps both in terms of accuracy, but in particular helps um, uh, the model having uh, higher combined accuracy, where with combined accuracy, we, we mean the number of tickets where both contact type prediction and reply prediction is correct. And the reason why this happens is that adding this dependency makes the predictions more coherent with each other. So finally, we're going to um, talk about a slight comparison about Cota V1 and Cota V2, in particular on um, all the different metrics that we care about. So accuracy on, on contact type, uh, it's at free on contact type, accuracy on reply, and it's at free on reply. Uh, the Cota V2 models perform better, but in particular, what we care mostly about is the combined accuracy. And there, the Cota V2 is about 20% um, as a 20% relative improvement over Cota V1 models. And um, if we plot um, the distribution of uh, correct and wrong predictions over the probability of what the model, um, of, of the classification of the model, we can see that uh, most of the correct predictions are, um, have really high uh, probability from the model. So we can apply a threshold and see um, how it swipes through our data set so we can decrease the amount of coverage of our data and increase the accuracy. If you do it both for contact types and for replies, we have these 3D surfaces where we can slice, for instance, uh, the uh, coverage surface, project it to the accuracy surface and identify the best accuracy we can have for that amount of data. And if we can plot it on a single, on a single plot, we can see that uh, if we decrease the amount of coverage, so we cover less tickets, but we can get much more accurate. In particular, these two points are really important because we can get 95% accuracy on 10% of the ticket and 90% accuracy on 20% of the ticket. This high accuracy is actually, uh, one of the conclusions that we got is that this high accuracy is what makes our uh, model um, fast, make for faster and more accurate uh, customer support because we're helping our CSR agents with that and also helps the, uh, saving millions of dollars for the company. And also the other finding is that um, those deep learning models are actually 20% uh, more accurate than uh, previous models. These are the teams that have been involved in this project. I want to thank them all because this has been like a really big uh, and wide collaboration across the company.